Hi everyone, this is Shane Gibson with RackN, and today we're going to talk about how you can take a comparison from a baseline set of values on a uh, server platform and compare them against a configurable set of differences that you would like to surface up. In this case, we're going to explicitly show uh, the change in the bill of materials or SKU of a machine and the change in BIOS differences of the machine. This is going to be done using the universal workflow system, which allows us to do a very advanced set of capabilities where we can inventory machines, uh, validate machines, classify machines, uh, obviously create a baseline of the machines, compare those differences, that's the validation stat, uh, stage. It also allows you to flexibly uh, chain into other workflows uh, in addition to these hardware lifecycle management workflows, you can chain into operating system installation workflows, uh, higher order cluster configuration workflows, or any other sort of operational workflow you'd like to be able to chain into. It allows you to uh, build up a series of workflows to chain the machine into. At the end of the day, though, our goal is to provide a report of the differences between that originally captured baseline state and the current state of the system so we can do something interesting with that report. Uh, one note about uh, this demo is uh, because we're working with hardware, there's a set of hardware configuration in the machine. There's the BIOS configuration in the machine. And so typically the way the baseline process would work is you create that baseline, that's your gold master that you're going to refer back to. And then when you do your validation process to see what's drifted or changed, you would compare the current state of the machine against that baseline. Well, for the demo purposes, we're going to do things a little bit differently. We'll do the recording of the baseline, show you how that process works. We'll take that uh, recorded baseline and we're going to manipulate some of the values uh, in the recorded baseline. So when we run the validation against the current configuration of the machines, we'll have some differences that surface it to the um, report side of the house and show you the differences. Ultimately, though, we get the same exact set of values from the test. And so we're comparing uh, essentially a baseline to a current configuration. And for the test purposes, we're just modifying that baseline uh, to make the test easier to uh, sort of demonstrate. Um, alternatively, I suppose I could fly from the west coast to the east coast where this hardware is sitting and pull some dim modules out of the server and then rerun the validation so you can see the differences. Probably not a very effective way of doing it. Specifically, what we're going to show today is the difference in the bill of materials or the SKU. Now, remember, it's configurable. There's a wide range of things that you can pick from. I've picked a half dozen different set of parameters, which I'll show in a moment. Um, primarily, the difference that we're going to capture is uh, a change in the difference between the number of DIM modules and the, the missing DIM module sizes that are missing from the machine. So, for example, uh, two DIM modules have died or somebody has pilfered the machine or you know who knows what's happening something has diff changed in the configuration of the number of dim modules in the machine uh, from the bios setting perspective we're going to show uh, someone has injected a baseboard management configuration user uh, that gives them full administrative access so this might be an example of a nefarious a user creating a, a backdoor access to the machine. Uh, you want to compare and make sure um, that the known set of administrative accounts uh, haven't changed. In this case, we'd catch that difference. That's sort of an example scenario. What we're not going to directly show is the difference in the uh, firmware of flash versions. Um, this is not really uh, feasible to do uh, because the vendor tooling doesn't really give us the ability to easily query uh, what are all the current versions on the system in one sort of clean tool that we can baseline and compare against. You can run the actual firmware flash process and as a result of that, the textual output from these tools will tell you some of the things that it's doing although we found that it's not always telling the truth so you have to take that with a grain of salt and we'll show what those differences look like in a, in a 
as an output from that, uh, but it's not very easy to capture uh, programmatically the differences in versions. What we typically recommend is you have a sort of baseline set of firmware ver versions and flash values for a given uh, platform, and you uh, conform that system to those versions and values uh, so that you know that it is exactly what you intend the machine state to be in. As a process, uh, as a consequence of conforming that, you can look at the output of the, the job log report and see uh, what those differences are. Last, you want to be able to interact with some external service and be able to report this information to that service. So an example might be uh, if there are differences in the state of the system from the baseline, I want to open a ticket with a trouble ticketing system. And we would do that through our call, callback plugin to open a ticket and some administrator or, or operations team will get, get that ticket raised in their queue and they will then service that ticket based on the information in it. Uh, we have the callback capabilities to do that with generic RESTful services. We'll show where that hook comes from. Uh, I don't have that configured in the demo here today. Uh, it's also possible to use other services that don't uh, conform specifically to RESTful uh, API endpoint services. In that case, you'd create a, a custom task integration that's, you know, for example, speaks SOAP or something. Uh, and in that case, you can flexibly inject that task into the workflow and then use that as the reporting mechanism to the external service. To get started, though, we need to first uh, prepare the baseline of the system. And to do that, we're going to jump over to the portal. Um, and we are going to start a baseline. Uh, note that we have this first machine that's running through this firmware flash process, and when it gets done, we'll show uh, at the end of the demo here the results of that flash upgrade process, and you'll see uh, what I'm, I'm talking about in the reporting. Uh, the machine's in the bit process of rebooting right now and applying the firmware flash. On this uh, TKG03 machine object, uh, we're going to go ahead and create the um, uh, report for the baseline and to do that we're going to take this machine and we're going to put it in the uh, universal baseline workflow and this universal baseline workflow goes through a series of stages to uh, collect inventory information and then create these baseline recorded states of the machine and what that looks like uh, if we take a look at the workflow um, our workflow system uh, for is pretty straightforward. It's a, uh, what we refer to as a, a workflow that contains a series of stages. A stage will have one or more um, tasks in it and then the tasks um, implement work or jobs uh, through uh, templates and so the template gets served to the machine and executed after it's been instantiated uh, and then run and then we re record the results. It's pretty straightforward uh, but an incredibly powerful platform. In this case, the universal baseline has a couple of hooks um, where we do initial discovery of the machine. Uh, we do some uh, flexibility. We allow you to uh, add the callbacks at the beginning of the workflow and at the end of the workflow flexibly. You can flexibly inject tasks here in the FlexiFlow stage. And then when we step to stages four through 10 here, we're doing some inventory of the machine where we collect more information uh, from the baseboard management controller, the RAID controller, the LLDP packets off the network so we know the top rack switches and ports. Uh, we get a baseline in the BIOS configuration, a baseline of the uh, RAID configuration. And then this inventory stage uh, turns a lot of those inventory, larger JSON inventory objects into a lighter weight set of parameters on the machine that are much easier to work with. Uh, the GoHi inventory uh, JSON data structure that gets built up in the very first stage of this discover stage can be really enormous. It can be anywhere from eight to 20,000 lines of JSON. And processing that is very expensive. So the inventory module uh, stage lets us uh, create a much more lightweight, easier to use thing. We go through um, the baseline, uh, allows us to flexibly inject more tasks at the end of the, the hardware baselining process. Uh, we do a classification. So we can take uh, some of the inventory information and we can do dynamic classification in the system, add information to the system, remove information from the system based on the hardware inventory. We can also interact in all of our classification steps 
uh, we can uh, interact with external uh, services and uh, ask questions of external services and take um, classification actions on the machine. So for example, I have this machine with a serial number XYZ, what should I do with it? And a classification might come back, well this machine is going to become a, a Kubernetes uh, worker machine and, and that will drive its, the workflow chaining behaviors down the road. Uh, ultimately, what we end up doing is uh, completing that sort of baseline and validation process, and then we have our hook to chain into another workflow. So if we have a flexible set of uh, chain maps that we're going to work with, then we can jump into another workflow and, and do more advanced, interesting things. Uh, in the meantime, if we come back to the machine, we'll see um, that we're just about complete here, uh, just in fact now completed up uh, with that uh, workflow. If we take a look at the machine object, we'll see that the machine has some information on it that's important here, so the BIOS target configuration. Uh, this is uh, the current machine's uh, configuration values uh, that were taken out of the BIOS and then uh, extrapolated into how we would apply it to the machine to return this machine to this current state. So this is one of our first primary pieces of the baseline is this BIOS target configuration. In this case if we look for uh, users.5 uh, in here this is the BMC's configuration uh, that we're going to actually manipulate in a moment uh, that will uh, trigger the difference. So in this case it has no value set to it, so the username has no set value to it, and there's no access uh, rights, no administrative access rights for this user value. We'll change that in a moment and you'll see that in a minute. The other uh, interesting things are these inventory parameters. These are some of the things that we're going to do that bomb skew configuration validation against, and we'll show that in a moment. And then last, there is uh, you, there's a uh, no validation errors or no validation errors ignore, which are important parameters we're going to work with in a moment. In addition, the validate parameters, this was built up based on the configuration of what we want to see the difference of, and this becomes a series of rules for us to measure against. So one of the things that we're going to measure against is BIOS configuration difference. We're going to measure, uh, like I was saying, the inventory DIM sizes and then the inventory dim counts. So in this case, these are things we're going to measure. And that is done uh, through a profile. And we see that we have this profile in the machine. And this profile is sort of the description or the configuration state of this series of tasks that I'm going to be running on this machine that we're walking through. In this case, the universal system has some configurable data. We're not going to worry about that too much right now. What's sort of important here is the validate record parameters. This tells us what are the interesting things and the differences that we want to capture. And this is what generated that uh, operation set of values uh, that we're going to do the, the differences. So, so this is the configuration of the things that we want to capture, including those dims and dim sizes and the BIOS differences. Uh, that we can uh, want to put on there. Essentially, we can uh, record a large range of things, pretty much any of the um, parameters that are in, uh, available on a machine that describe the state of the machine can be recorded in this case. So there's it, the use cases go well beyond just hardware um, lifecycle or hardware bomb SKU, BIOS configuration. It's a very flexible system. Um, however, what we need to do now is we need to modify um, oh, what happened is part of this universal baseline process is it creates a series of profiles, which are the actual baseline profiles, uh, based on that universal configuration that I was mentioning earlier. There is uh, these two profiles that get built up with configuration uh, state and information in them, and my mouse comes back. There we go. If we take a look at it. Um, this is the actual baseline validate parameters that we were talking about, uh, that we're going to validate the bomb SKU. And then this is the BIOS target configuration. Same configuration we saw in the machine, uh, but they become available as portable profiles that can be used later on uh, by the universal system as the, sort of the gold master comparison. Uh, irrespective of the actual values captured on the machine. Remember that the values are compared real time uh, to the machine based on this configuration. This is what we're going to modify. 
uh, for our test purposes. And to do that, we're going to interact with the infrastructure as a code service. And I'm going to jump over here to a shell. And basically, uh, if I show you in this profiles directory, we have these two profiles described. Uh, if we um, edit those profiles, you'll see that um, very similar uh, data to what we were just looking at. The difference, though, here is you'll see that I've modified the dim uh, uh, sizes. There are six instead of eight, and I've modified the count from eight to six. So, so this is the comparison results that we're going to be uh, comparing for. And that's primarily it. And to do the um, uh, actually upload these, we want to bundle these. Uh, in the baseline uh, YAML and then upload these to the DRP endpoint. Uh, let's just do this. And so we're going to upload these to the endpoint. Note um, that here I'm using this replace writable. It's going to overwrite those um, profiles that were written on the system with my changes. Uh, because I have an administrative account and access to you know, a super user account on the uh, digital rebar platform system, I can do that. And so this is going to update uh, those profiles. If we go back and look at the profiles now, we'll see that they've been updated. And uh, actually, it's not a good one to show the update. Uh, this is the one we want to see the update. So we want to see that this uh, users.5 values are now updated and different. So we see that there's now this username hidden with this password secret and the account has administrative privileges. So that's the, um, the thing that we're, we're looking for in the differences. All right, now that that's done, we're going to jump over to this clean system where we're going to compare the state of this clean system uh, to the baseline state. And to do that, we're going to use the universal uh, differences uh, workflow, which is very similar to our universal discover workflow. It's just been reduced down to run a little bit faster without some of the other hardware components and pieces. Uh, that we don't really care about in this um, case. And so in this use case, it's going to go through the process of inventorying the machine. And it is going to do a BIOS uh, configuration pull. And that process takes a couple minutes. And we'll let it go ahead and do that. OK. So uh, that process is completed up. And one of the things I should point out is, as the uh, workflow went through uh, its series of steps, one of the things that it was doing is classifying. And so we, we did a RAID inventory inventory. Uh, we do this class universal discover classification. And in this classify step, the machine uh, identified through a combination of our configuration. So the configuration here being that universal set of configuration values I was talking about, uh, the baseline application uh, and the baseline bill of materials. Uh, these values uh, dictated, coupled with the machine's uh, physical inventory information, uh, a set of rules that built up the profile and added the profiles to the machines. Uh, these are the profiles that were previously built in the baseline. So they get dynamically added to the machine. So here's that um, bill of materials uh, baseline that describes uh, the things that we're going to look for that are, that are different. And then here are the uh, BIOS configuration differences. And uh, remember, again, uh, the users.5 is the thing that we changed uh, that we're going to look for. So we expect this in the report as a set of differences that we find. If we come back to the machine, we look at the machine's output, <clears throat> and we take a look at the machine object, we'll see that we have this BIOS configuration differences which got recorded. And sure enough, we see those specific BIOS configuration lines which are different, which has this nefarious uh, excuse me, the nefarious, uh, but, 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 here we go, um, hidden username with a secret password that has administrative access. So this is something that we obviously want to be uh, very concerned about as uh, being uh, different, uh, as a possibility of difference that we're concerned with checking in on. 
Um, if we look at the actual inventory values, I remember how I was saying there were eight DIMMs of 16 gig modules. This is what our inventory report states. Uh, and then there are supposed to be eight DIMM modules. Uh, again, remember we modified that to six uh, 16 gig DIMM modules and six DIMM module count. And uh, if we come back down all the way to the end here, and we take a look at our validation errors ignore, this is where we've recorded the results of those differences. So here we have, and we have a little bit of a scrolling issue in the report, but basically um, here we have dims fail to match, expected six, uh, actual or eight, and the uh, dim sizes that we expected, we expected to find six of these 16 gig values, and we actually found uh, eight of these 16 gig values. And then also the an additional recording on the BIOS difference setting values here. And so sure enough, we've collected all of those report uh, information. This is the information that would become interesting uh, from a uh, reporting perspective. So what we would wanna do then is uh, trigger the uh, reporting in the callback system to collect this uh, validation uh, errors ignore uh, parameter set of values and then go and report on it. And how that would work, uh, again, in the universal baseline, we look at the workflow. <coughs> There's this, uh, excuse me, I'm looking at the wrong workflow. Uh, in this case, the universal differences workflow. It exists in both places, but this is where it matters. Is There's this stage six uh, universal discover complete callback. So this is where we would uh, actually trigger the uh, action to interact with the external RESTful API service, post the information to our ticketing system, and bang, we have a report that gets sent out uh, to the uh, ticketing system or, or whatever you want to do with that information. All right, um, I skipped in my slides the step two comparing the differences. We uh, jumped right into that. I was so excited to show it to you. Uh, and then uh, we talked about the uh, firmware versions and differences. And then also we talked about the RESTful API integration, uh, that callback plugin uh, lets you create any number of uh, callback uh, API interactions with get, put, post, uh, RESTful API services. And that is it. That's the um, summary of uh, BOM configuration, BIOS configuration differences, uh, how to create that report and the differences, and how to go do something interesting with that report. Again, uh, Shane Gibson with Racken, thank you very much for your time.